Hey guys, welcome to the video today. So we are going to learn how to take footage that looks like this and turn it into this. So now that we've seen it, how do we achieve it? In the video today, I've separated it into three tutorials. The first tutorial is going to deal with fake camera movement. Fake camera movement is learning to animate whatever footage you've taken and then give it the impression in post-processing like whatever you recorded was done so on a gimbal or a dolly or even a more expensive setup than that without necessarily needing to buy any expensive equipment. And it looks really cinematic doing these cool pans, these rotations. You can get really, really creative with it. In the second tutorial, I'll cover what I call the cinematic starter pack. It's three really, really simple edits that you can do that can up that visual quality of any project that you're working on. And that's going to include warp stabilizer. What is it? What does it do? Cinema bars, adding them in a variety of different ways that gives your project that look like you're going to visit the theater. And then finally, something particularly good for most of us who are recording on digital cameras, how to add film grain to whatever footage it is that you've recorded to make what you're recording look more organic. Finally, good footage is properly exposed footage and every single camera has a histogram. And a histogram, once demystified, once understood, is essentially learning how to understand your camera's reading of whatever light is in the frame that you've recorded. And when you understand the histogram, and once I've given an explanation of it, you should be able to expose your footage perfectly every single time, and that's gonna give you something great to work with in post-processing, starting from quality building blocks and then going from there. All right, that's all she wrote, so let's get into Adobe Premiere. Alright guys, so let's get into these fake camera movements. I'm going to be messing around today with a 4K clip and I would recommend that as much as possible you do as well. The reason for that being when the whole essence of this is messing around with scale and position, the increased resolution gives you much more flexibility in terms of what you can change and alter. All right, that said, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is a simple pan from right over to the left, real, real easy. So to do that, the first thing we wanna do is go up to the scale here and bump this into like 140, we'll say. Now, the reason for this being that when we mess around with position right here, this is what's gonna give us the pan. If we haven't done the zoom, then we're gonna get exposure of the fringe, the edge of your clip, and we obviously don't want that. So you start with the initial scale zoom, and again, that's the benefit of 4K. So let's decide where we want to start from panning from the right, let's say about here, and we would then hit the position toggle animation right here, and it puts in our first keyframe, and that now means we put a keyframe in, and we are starting to animate this position movement. If we move it again, another keyframe will be added and we will move to that position. So let's say to about here, halfway through the clip, we would like it to have finished its pan. So we take it halfway to the clip, we go up to position again, and then we move it over to the desired pan amount that we want. And since we're focusing on this woman as our subject, we'll kind of have it stop as she hits the center of the screen. And that's it. Now we have our two keyframes added in and animating the scene. So when we watch it again, we have a delicious fake camera movement tracking on this woman as she enters the scene. Pretty cool. So that's one, let's reset, let's do another. I would say let's go with a simple cinematic zoom. So with a cinematic zoom, we're not worried about the outer edges. We're gonna go from zero inwards. We're not gonna go left to right or anything. So leave your scale at 100 and this time hit the scale toggle, toggle animation button and we'll start from there. You can see again, we got the first keyframe. We'll go to here, roughly halfway through the clip. That's where we want our scaling to have completed. And we'll bump up the scale, the zoom, to let's say 140. That'll give us a satisfying zoom to follow along over this woman's shoulder as she heads down the lane. We got our two clips again, or our two keyframes again, and we follow it in. 
Cinematic zoom, how is it doing that? How is he not on a gimbal? So cool, very practical. So the last one that I'll show you is really cool and it's a rotation and you can use it to enhance the subject that's in your frame. So say for example, we had a watch here and we wanted something to be in sync with the watch's movement. We could do a rotation. And rotation is no different than either of these scale or position. It's the same principle at work here. The one thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing is that you are zoomed in enough that when you do the rotation, no black edges are revealed. So you can see here, we're getting a little black edges at 170. We gotta go in a little further. So let's go into 200, almost there, 210, boom. Okay, no problem. We got no more black edges anymore. Let's check the full rotation. Yep, no black edges. So now let's go full inception. We'll go back to the beginning here. We will now toggle animation for rotation by about halfway through. We want that woman upside down. That is my preference, you will find your own. And we've done the same thing. So here we have our two keyframes in. If we watch from the beginning, we got this crazy, crazy rotation going on. And there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with that. So there it is, a couple of basic cool things you can do with fake camera movements, and that's just the beginning. You'll find tons as you get more used to it. All right, next up is the starter pack, the three pack for getting your footage looking more cinematic. So we're gonna start with the warp stabilizer. To find that, you go up to effects on the top right, type in warp, you'll find the warp stabilizer right here, and you click and drag it onto your footage. Now, a little precursor, a little warning here. When we watch this footage, sure, it could be improved. This could be more stable, but you'll notice that it's not actually too bad. And that's because the warp stabilizer should only be used to add that final finishing touch. It should not be that you're thinking, oh, I'll just throw the warp stabilizer onto this afterwards. If your footage is mangled when you first record it, the warp stabilizer is not going to save you. So it's a great tool to have in the toolbox, but don't overly rely on it. So we'll watch this first. Pretty good, pretty good. But now we'll apply the warp stabilizer. And we'll be back in a moment with the magic of editing because at first it's going to analyze the scene and then run through all the frames and then it will stabilize it. Okay, now it is stabilized, finished up. Let's have a look, see how it goes. Oh yeah, buttery, buttery smooth. Look at that. The, the difference it can make, you think that you got it mostly stabilized, but then when you apply this, it really is a nice difference that you get out of it. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is toss on that film grain. So I've downloaded a free film grain. I believe there's a site called Grainzilla. You could go there if you'd like, but uh, I wanted mine for free. <laughs> So what you gotta do, because it won't necessarily match your frame, is drop it in, right click, and then scale to frame size, boom. And then we go up here to the top left and we go to overlay. Now you can see that's really, really strong. We don't want that much necessarily. We're looking for an authentic film look, but we don't want it rippling across. So you come up to opacity, click opacity. You don't want to keyframe this, so click that off. And then you'll play around with this for a bit, but I like going with something around 40%, so it looks a little more organic, a little more authentic, but it's not going to overpower the shot. Now, the last thing that we can do to add that finished off cinematic look to this shot would be to add in those cinema bars. So what we'll do over here in the project is we will go new, we will go down here to, where is it? Adjustment layer. Say okay, that's the, what we want. Rename this crop. Now we drop the adjustment layer in over our footage here. We go up to effects, type in crop, and drop crop onto our adjustment layer. You can see the crop effect has been added here, and at the top and the bottom we can chop off whatever we want. So don't go crazy. I usually like to do about 13%, bottom let's say about 13% as well. And now we've got that cool, like you're in the cinema look with the bars on the top and the bottom. There you go, pretty cool stuff. All right, why don't we add a little music actually, just because we're here. This seems like, uh, this seems like the thing to do because you know, it's cinematic, it's kind of majestic and sad. How will this do? 
Okay, let's bring this up to here and probably turn this down so it doesn't blow our ears off. And let's see what this four seconds of footage looks like. Much more cinematic, I'm sure. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that's it, that's the starter pack. Get that film grain on there, add the cinema bars, and also stabilize your footage, and you're gonna go a long way to making it look a hell of a lot better. Alright, let's make short work of the histogram now so you can understand it and start using it immediately to better expose your footage. And I'm going to do that with the aid of a couple of different images that we'll throw up on the screen. The first one that I'm going to put up in this area right here will essentially show you what exactly the histogram is doing, and that's representing light values. So something on the very far left is going to be blacks moving over to shadows and then in the middle we have grays and midtones all the way over to the right we have highlights and anything essentially bright the right hand side of the histogram is something that's extremely light near your image say for example like a light itself or if you had something that was incredibly black that would be on the left hand side of the image the way that we can use the histogram then is to see how many pixels are stacked up on whichever side in the histogram's half cut off rectangle. So if you see on the right hand side of your Instagram, I'll throw up on the screen now an example of overexposure. If you only have pixels stacked up on the right hand side of your screen, that means that your shot is overexposed and likely way, way too bright and you're losing all sorts of detail in your highlights. Take that shot down now. Let's throw up the next one, which will give an example of an underexposed shot. In the case of a shot being underexposed, you're going to see exactly what you would expect, a stacking up of pixels on the left-hand side of your histogram. This means that your shot's too dark and you probably need to bump something up like your ISO or whatever other of the exposure triangle aspects that you need to mess around with to correctly expose the shot. Last but not least, I'll throw up a shot now that shows basically the ranges of exposure now stylistically you can break these rules if you want to but you can see concisely now where the properly exposed shot is and what it's going to look like on your histogram and it's just that simple when you read the histogram you're going to understand better what it is that you're going to work with in post-production because you can't always look at the back of your monitor and know if something is properly exposed the histogram will tell you 100% accurate every single time. Now let's review what we've learned. Make use of fake camera movements to add the impression of pans, zooms, and rotations in footage that would otherwise need really, really expensive equipment to do so. Utilize the three elements in the cinematic starter pack to give your footage an overall more professional and organic look. And finally, understand the basics of the histogram, how it represents light, and how that information can tell you what footage is overexposed, underexposed, and just right. All right, guys, that about wraps it up. If you got any questions, please put it down below in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please do check out my Instagram here. This is where I'm doing a lot of the photography filmmaking stuff if you're into that i hope you subscribe to the channel thanks always for watching and i will catch you in the next one peace